If you're in the market for a small family hatchback, then there really is no shortage of choice. There are popular offerings like the Ford Focus, Vauxhall Astra, and Volkswagen Golf, but also more expensive offerings like the BMW 1 Series, Audi A3, and Mercedes A-Class. But for Nissan, well, it's been nearly 10 years since they had a true offering in the Almera, but that's all changed with this, the Pulsar. Now, from the outside, it's safe to say that the styling is somewhat conservative compared to some of its competition. That's quite surprising, really, when you consider Nissan's funky design direction with the quirky Duke and the new Micra. Inside, the cabin isn't lined with cheap materials or plastics that won't stand the test of time. In fact, if you're familiar with the Nissan Qashqai dash layout, then it won't take you long to get your head around functionality. It may not be up there with the very best in class for build quality, but getting comfortable is easy, thanks to a steering wheel that adjusts for reach as well as rake, as well as a flexible seat too. The seats aren't massively supportive though, and lumbar support isn't standard, even as an optional extra, so some drivers may struggle with it on long journeys. The entry level trims don't get a central touchscreen, just a small display for the radio, and incredibly, a CD player. Don't worry though, MP3 connectivity is available, as too is DAB radio and Bluetooth connectivity. Visibility is also pretty impressive, and if you opt for the Tecna trim, you'll get an overhead 360 degree view camera around the car to help with parking. One big plus point for the Pulsar is space. Anyone sat in the front, especially if they're tall, will not struggle for head or leg room. And even if the driver has a seat all the way back, you'll find anyone sat in the back seat will have more than enough room to stretch out. And don't think that all this space impacts on its load carrying ability, far from it. With the seats upright, the Pulsar can carry an impressive 385 litres, and this can be extended further by folding down the 60-40 split folding rear bench. It is a little frustrating though that when you fold the seats down, there is a step in the floor, and there's no option of a false floor. So on to the business of engines and the Pulsar is available with a turbocharged 114 brake horsepower, 1.2 litre petrol or a more powerful 187 brake horsepower, 1.6 litre petrol. Alternatively, the 109 brake horsepower diesel is also available. It's not what you'd call rapid, but it pulls progressively with no jolt when the turbo kicks in. The best one to go for is the 1.2 as it's flexible enough for everyday use around town and doesn't feel out of puff at the higher speeds. The ride isn't up there with the very best in class but it won't have passengers reaching for the sick bags either. It's comfortable at cruising speed and when it comes to the twisty road it's pretty predictable and secure. The steering could have a bit more feel though but there is a decent amount of grip. The Pulsar is a family hatchback of the no-nonsense variety. It's a true workhorse that'll tackle anything that's thrown at it. It's just a shame it's not as involving or as engaging to drive as some of its more expensive rivals. It's spacious, decent to drive and a great value for money for both company car drivers and private buyers.